Assalamu alaikum students how are you i hope you'll be fine open your books page 59 today we will read the remaining story of unit number 5 amar's cafe steady on amar sir maham suspecting that he was getting carried away by his fancies what place what deposit what lady amar didn't look at her directly or give her an answer right away he pulled a length of rope off a hook on the wall and used it to tie up one of the baskets that was in danger of coming away from the bicycle frame that would not do at all he thought to himself as he heaved on the loose end of the rope and fastened it to the basket to have all my wares tumble down accidentally because of one loose string what a thought what place replied amar eventually having taken his time in coming up with a satisfactory explanation why the one on the corner next to the park you know the one with the mulberry tree in it where our boys used to play so long ago i found out who the owner of the land is now and i have agreed to buy it i have been putting away a little money each week for years maham it is all agreed so there is no use in trying to deter me from this the bank is going to lend me the money the old lady has agreed to sell it to me i shall start to clear the land on saturday our cafe will not be a dream for much longer maham stood and gaped at him she was lost for words she did not know whether to shout for joy or to weep she did neither but stood and stared blankly at him trying to take in and make sense of all this news i shall tell you all about it when i get back this evening proposed amir in haste as he shakily wheeled his bicycle out of the courtyard into alley and then like a shadow under a fleeting cloud he was gone Amar pushed his bicycle to the top of the cobbled alley and on to the main road. He didn't stop there to mount the bicycle as he usually did, using the bench on the corner as a platform instead. He decided to take a stroll past the vacant plot so that he could take another long look at it. He revealed his plans to his wife at long last and he now felt more comfortable within himself. It had taken a long time for him to do so and it had been a strain keeping it a secret he had not wanted to be put off his objective in any way all those restless nights of the planning and surmising now come to an end all the final negotiations and visits to the bank could be undertaken with great ease and peace of mind He had come clean she knew and she would soon come round and help him in reaching this goal. He could now relax and dream some more about his cafe. His heart filled with excitement at the thought of how Maham would feel and how she would react when he told her that evening of the progress he had already made on the deal and how together they would be the proud owners of the cafe. and how their circumstances would change for the better as he wheeled his unsteady bicycle past the forlorn site amar saw in his mind what the cafe would look like he could see himself standing outside the entrance smiling there would be no final cafe anywhere in the town maham was there too somewhere in the background she was busily arranging glistening white plates on the counter and ladling steaming dal and chicken curry into tiny bowls another man the chef was removing hot golden naan from a glowing oven at the back He was smiling too and seemed happy with his work. Two young boys, smartly attired in white shirts and black trousers, were carrying the trays laden with naan rotis and overflowing bowls off the long tables at one end of the building, at which sat rows of the eager diners. Sweat rolled off the boys' brows as they walked feverishly. 
dodging expertly among us the throng of dinners outside and all the way down the pavement. There was a widening crew of the expectant people waiting for tables in the cafe. The noise of the chatter and laughter filled the ear, and Amar beamed with pride as he welcomed customers old and new, young and ancient, the largest and shiniest neon signboard he had ever seen twinkled and glowed attractively. High above the entrance, Amar's Cafe, Amar's Cafe, Amar's Cafe, it blinked and then further lighted words came on below it, one at a time, ever so slowly, which read, the only place in the town. The lights dimmed and blurred as Amar's eyes filled with tears of joy, and the lights of the cafe merging in some incredible way became part of real lights, the traffic lights ahead of him. This is a dream worth living for, thought Amir, as he trundled on, pushing his bicycle ahead of him. This is a dream worth die. But the thought remained incomplete. Amir did not see the truck or hear the screech of brakes. There were only lights in his subconscious mind. Sights and sounds mingled and became one with the noise of the dinos in Amar's cafe. The flashing neon lights shone brightly for a moment, flickered and then went out completely. Blackness enveloped Amar's world. Now the exercise of the story. Question 2. Select the best answer. The overripe mulberries, unpicked and untasted, save by the birds, had fallen and dotted on the ground. This means the option fourth is the correct option. Only the birds add the mulberries. Part B. She had always ridiculed them as being mere pipe dreams. This means the correct option is third. She made fun of them because they were fanciful and unattainable dreams. Question third. Answer the following with reference to context. Text is simply a quiet resignation. About whom was this statement made? This statement was made about Maham. Question two. In what ways had the subject shown resignation? Answer is, she had stopped commenting on her husband's dreams. Question third, is the sentence a complete sentence? Give a reason for your answer. This sentence is not a complete sentence because it doesn't have a subject and verb. Part B, all the final negotiations and visits to the bank could be undertaken with greater ease and peace of mind. Question is, about whom was this statement made? This statement was made about Amir. Why might all this now be possible? All this might be possible now because he had revealed his plans to his wife. Question third is, what were the reasons for further negotiations and visits to the bank? He wanted to buy the plot to build his cafe. Solution of all these questions has been attached with your diary. Thank you.